Yeah. Okay. I can hear you. You don't have to worry about talking loudly because we've got that mic on you. So yeah. just talk in a normal tone of voice. All right. I won't holler at you then. I'll just let you holler at me. Good. Well, the boundary was uh, started in 1963. Took uh, just a little less than four years to complete. Our uh, first unit went commercial September 1st of 1967. Uh, I've been here uh, since then. I came in January of 67. Started out as an inspector on generator erection and then went on maintenance. And except for time on the schedule, I've been here most of the time since. Well, we're capable of carrying 650 megawatts out of the plant. Uh, how many employees do you have working here? We have 22 full-time employees. We uh, hire six extra in the summer and a tour guide. What's it like to work in a place like this? It's so beautiful. What's it a well, to me, it's great. I've lived in remote areas all my life. I've worked in areas like this, such as here and at the Skagit and before that for logging and mining companies. It's, uh, I guess it's like anybody else, it's like doing your job. It depends on where you like to live and what you want. It's a pretty nice place to do your job. Well, I think so. Are most of the employees who work here, do most of them really enjoy country living? Is that why they've chosen to come here? Well, yes, I think so. Uh, some of uh, the fellows have lived here most of their lives, so this is home to them. I assume if they didn't enjoy country living, why they would live in town. But uh, like myself, uh, they like to be in remote areas. Uh, what other things are you involved in? Now, you live right in Middle East Falls. Yes. Yeah. Well, I belong to the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, that's uh, a community improvement association. I belong to Lions Club, and they function like Lions Clubs any place. They're a service organization. Uh, I'm involved with the school. Uh, I don't serve on the board, but I work with the school district. Uh, the hospital is right across the street. I'm an emergency medical technician, so is my wife. We're, I guess you just say we're part of the community. We do the same things, whether it was here or somewhere else. Pretty Light has treated me well. It's, uh, it's been a satisfying place to work. What will you do after you retire? Well, I'll go prospecting. i look for the elusive gold and the sands of various creeks that I've known about for most of my life. They're installing two new generators. When we first constructed the plant, why, uh, we excavated a room to, for the two new generators and put in the pen stalks and the draft tubes. And now we're putting in the turbines and generators. This will add to our ability to peak and uh, we won't waste water like you can see behind me now. We usually spill from sometime in April till in July, for on an average. There was uh, at least one year that we spilled water from the 6th of January till the 8th of August. Uh, there were two years that we did not spill any water.
My name is Jim Daniel. I'm a hydro operator too. I've been here uh, since uh, July 11th, 1967. It'll be about 18 years this coming July. So you were here when the project first began? Yeah, I got here about a month before we started generating. They were still uh, constructing when I got here. And when you started out, what was your first job? My first job was this, Hydro Operator 2. I was a uh, uh, senior operator in Spokane for the city of Spokane and uh, they invited me to come up here and, and with the same title and I've been here ever since. What do you like about working up here? Well, I like the people and uh, the city of Seattle has been real good to me and I like the uh, country, I like hunting and fishing and that's what attracted me anyway when I first come up here. I intend to retire here or in this area. How long do you have to go before you retire? Well, I'll be 65 in August, and uh, I don't particularly have any plans. Uh, just depends on what the, how the mood strikes me, I guess. I don't have any particular thing to do, and I like, I like it. I like working with the people, and so. What is it about the people that's so special? Well, uh, I just get along with them, I enjoy being with them. Someone said that if they didn't work here, they'd pay to watch. I think that kind of sums up my philosophy about it. I kind of like them. I think I'd miss it. Great. Why would they pay to watch? Well, some of the uh, attitude, uh, it's a, uh, a positive attitude, gives you uh, uh, feeling of optimism, I guess. I don't know exactly how to put it. <laughs> so morale might be lower in some places in city life, but here it's pretty high. It's pretty high, yeah. It's real good. What are, what are your responsibilities as you sit at this desk here? What are you, what are you keeping track of? Uh, the generators and the, the whole uh, operation. Uh, monitoring the, uh, the whole operation. And, well, I guess that's about it. So you're seeing how much power comes out of here? And, yeah. And which yeah. generators are operating? Yeah, we uh, start and stop the generators, and we uh, monitor the power and the conditions of the generators, and also all the other equipment it, it goes on. We do the switching and stuff like that. We, we coordinate with, with uh, maintenance. And for right now, with construction, too, we have a lot of construction going on. We also coordinate with them people, too. What kind of qualifications do you need to be a hydroelectric operator? What do you need to know? Well, you need to know uh, some basic engineering. Electrical engineering helps. Uh, in my case, I was studying electrical engineering, and I had intended on taking my EIT uh, test at Whitworth, and then the Seattle invited me to come up here, and I never did do it. But that training helped me a lot. It uh, helped me, and most of us uh, uh, have similar training. You have to have some, some theoretical knowledge of the uh, uh, subject. And then you have to have uh, experience. It usually takes about, oh, uh, if you've got the uh, theoretical training, then it takes about two years to, of experience to be a journeyman. How many operators are working here? Uh, seven. Seven operators. Do you work around the clock? Yeah. I do, yeah. And you'll retire here. What will you do after you retire? Well, I expect to do some travel. 
and I like to hunt and fish. And then I have a, a hobby. I, I like to paint pictures. And I painted that picture over there. I can do a lot better than that now. I enjoy that. I'll probably spend a lot of my time doing that. Yeah, that's my son. He, he's in Maine. He started out in substations in Seattle. And uh, then he transferred over here as a, as a junior operator, and then he took the constructor test, and now he's been a constructor ever since. He likes it, too. He's the same way I am. So the whole family's kind of here together. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we get together and go on a packing trip up in the woods, up in the mountains. We could we like that. All right, Jim, thanks a lot. You're welcome.
Well, my name is Robert Smith. I'm presently acting in the capacity of a junior operator. I used to live in that great metropolitan city, but I cut and ran and... You asked for it, you got it. No, probably never will be. But. Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> uh, he's ugly. <laughs> Presently, I'm working as a junior operator. My job consists primarily as a roving patrol throughout the project, observing meters and checking for problems that might lead to bigger problems, and logging such problems into the book where the maintenance crew takes care of anything that's detected. You're doing dam inspections, and you're just constantly on the move. You're kind of a gopher for the senior operator. Well, I, like everybody else, didn't know the Boundary Project existed. I worked for Seattle City Light from 74 to 78 before I came in contact with the Boundary. I came over here working in the status then as a structural painter and fell in love with the area. And there was no traffic. <laughs> the big bone of contention with Seattle wasn't so much Seattle but it was the influx of people into the area. And when I moved out of town and was commuting 16 miles, and it took me 20 minutes in 76 and 45 in 80, I just wasn't ready to deal with it any longer. So I had an opportunity to come to the boundary. Actually, I'd fought from 78 to 80 to get over here because I was tired of the Seattle area. Not so much the area itself because there's a lot of goodies you can take advantage of if you are in town. Over here, we're kind of isolated, taking advantage of the stores, taking advantage of the things that the city, City Light has to offer to its employees is pretty difficult from this point. You might say virtually impossible. Uh, I came over here, one, to escape the madhouse. Came out here, it's like almost a time machine in that you go back about 20 years in the pace of lifestyle. And I like it. <laughs> Bob, can you tell us a little bit about what you're studying to, um, I know you're working into, trying to work into another job, this operator job. What kind of stuff are you studying? Primarily at this point in time, everything that I can get my hands on. Uh, a lot of basic electricity, which being a painter, I, I've dealt with electricity in the past, but not extensively. I've worked around high voltage since coming to work for City Light in 74. So I have an understanding of where not to be and why not to be there. But uh, now I'm in the process of trying to figure out why it functions and how it functions and what happens here and why and what it's going to do over there and why. In other words, it's like going to kindergarten. I'm starting out phase one, step one, learning about generation, about how it goes on to the system, about synchronization of machines, a bunch of things that I really never have been concerned with, but at this point in time, it's a learning opportunity, and I'm kind of enjoying it. Uh, that and not snorting, snorting any paint fumes for a while hasn't hurt my feelings either. <laughs> you know, I know, Bob, that a lot of people heard about your accident several months ago and, and probably would like to know how you're doing. Better all the time. When I came back to work January 28th, I was still came back and went to work painting, which I am still a structural painter. 
working temporarily in this capacity. God willing, I'll pass the test and it'll become permanent. But uh, when I came back, my hands, I had to get up in the morning and stretch them because they wouldn't function at all. Now they're functioning quite well. My legs, I have a garment that I wear like uh, pantyhose. I wear pantyhose. On top of the pantyhose, I wear a pressure garment that's designed to keep scar scarring down like what you see on my hands. Both hands were grafted. And all in all, I'm pretty fortunate to even be sucking air. If I hadn't have been wearing the safety equipment that I was at the time, I definitely wouldn't be here today. Unfortunately, they just didn't have everything available that was needed at the time. We've heard some pretty good things about uh, the way the community responded over here to help you out. Is that, have you, have you felt a lot of support and help from the people around here? In a community of this size, it doesn't take you very long to know everybody or have an idea or feelings for everybody. We're a pretty close-knit group. We have to be. It's a matter of survival. We don't have all the advantages that are readily available in town. I've had people help me bring in my wood. They help me move the snow in the winter. And, you know, you bet you get a lot of help from the community and you're grateful for it. Thanks, Bob. Good luck. You betcha. Enjoy Seattle. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Study your book there. And oh, study, study, study. technician. Worked here almost six years. Just look at me. Don't worry about the camera. Should I lay back put my feet up on the desk? <laughs> no, just the operators. Yeah, <laughs> really. Um, Paulette, can you tell us a little bit about what you're responsible for here in the office? Well, basically all the things pertaining to an office as far as personnel goes here, uh, payroll, correspondence, um, distribution of the mail, um, typing, filing. Um, I do some of the warehousing at times, paperwork involved there, um, help scheduling vacations, and just basically right-hand person to the supervisor, Dick Stretch. So, organizer, party organizer, and <laughs> um, just a whole lot of everything, you know, sometimes putting away supplies, um, making, sometimes making trips to get supplies in Spokane, just a whole variety of, of different. But you grew was, up here. Yeah, I was born in Ione, raised in Medellin Falls. So, so I've lived here most of my life. Yeah, I guess you could call me a native. <laughs> Of a reputation just a downtown in the community. Are people real glad it's here? Or? Well, um, I think basically yes. There's a lot of uh, oh, 
some people do look down on like on the hiring practices that we were discussing earlier, which for me, I have to explain a lot of this to some of these people because they come down here, you know, wanting an application and and we don't use a, a standard application anymore. We just have like a card notification um, set up where if they're interested in taking a certain test or uh, filing for, you know, one of those tests, then I have to explain to him how the whole process works and it's very, very hard. It seems to be getting harder all the time to get your foot in the door, you know, unless you're a female or minority as we were discussing earlier. And it's hard for, you know, I'm so used to doing it now, but it's still hard for those people to understand. It's hard for me to understand. And I think a lot of that, um, you know, hiring locally, especially with our high unemployment rate, it's hard for people to understand around here. It really is. Because we're not Seattle. We're not even the Skagit. And so we're kind of in a unique um, situation over here, which is, so there's, there's a you know, I think so, in that area, yeah. Um, I think probably on the majority, though, they think it's a good thing. You know, I, well, and now, especially right now, there's a lot of construction going on, and the influx of the extra people to the businesses has is, is, uh, been very helpful to a lot of them, I'm sure. I'm sure they appreciate that. So. Did you have to get that? Oh, somebody got it. <laughs> um. Paulette, you're one of very few women in the in the, in the workforce out here. How does that is that okay or is it? I don't mind it a bit. I don't mind it a bit. Um, I I work. A f I'm one of the few or the only one that works the five and two, Monday through Friday, and um, I get a lot of respect from these guys. I at first, you know, when I first worked here. It was the first job I ever had that uh, I worked for one person, for one supervisor. And that, that took a little bit of getting used to, even though we've been through a few supervisors since I've been here. But um, they pretty well um, treat me real, real good. And Dick Stress is just a sweetheart for a boss. He really is. And he makes me feel appreciated. And I don't take any guff off the guys. <laughs> so we get along really well. There's, there's no problem there at all. And I love it. I lo Sometimes I, li I enjoy being the only female here. You know, on certain days I am just the only one. So, and there's no harassment or anything like that. None of that over here. Not at all. I, I keep hearing that um, people feel like it's a good group of people. They all kind of like each other. Do you remember what was it? Did you yeah. Yeah. We'll see. A lot of them are have lived here for years and are, you know, natives. Um, they worked around each other enough to know what each one's like and what each one is capable of. And um, there's a lot of joking and kidding and stuff like that. So everybody gets along real well, as far as I know. Yeah, they're really. And, and if they don't, then it, you know, sit down, and discuss it or whatever. But there's never any really hassles about, um, you know, working with each other. So that's a real good group. It really is. If you could change anything about the way this place is, the way City Light is, or the way Boundary is, what would you change? What would you consider the highest priority improvement? Oh, gosh. I, well, a lot of it falls on what we were talking about yeah. earlier, about the affirmative action and stuff. That's really an important uh, subject in such a small, uh, remote, areas this here because people just don't people around here just don't understand because everybody most everybody knows everybody and it's hard when you have a big organization like City Light it's hard to explain the whole civil service process and like we don't have very many minorities over here and we have a lot of people family people who are out of work and something comes through and says you know female feel I mean that just really drops a bombshell for a lot of people that are trying to support their families. I think that's a very major area right there. What kinds of things do you do? Um, you mentioned something about party organizers. When do you have parties here? 
Well, for instance, if we have uh, like retirement dinners or Christmas parties, um, uh, service award dinners, things like that, and, uh, finding a place to have it and maybe working through local organizations to try to have it uh, or, or right around this facility, you know, like within uh, between Iona and Medellin Falls because a lot of people don't like to travel too far, um, especially during a weekday. So it's, you know, contacting the, the organization and finding out if, if we can indeed do this on what date and how much and then taking head counts and, you know, this type of stuff. Um, if there's any gifts to be bought, trying to get uh, uh, feelers out to the, to the guys on what, what would be an appropriate gift and doing any collections um, for flowers or, you know, stuff like that. So. Um, or if we have a potluck, even we've had potlucks here during lunchtime, like for Thanksgiving or something like that, organizing that or helping or whatever. So. Do you think you'll stay here for a while? I think so. No plans to leave? No, nothing definite. I like it here. It's a good place to raise your children, good school system. My family lives here. Um, I live in a nice, quiet little town. <laughs> So, yeah, I like it here. I really do. All right. Thanks, Paulette. Mm -hmm.
in the fabricating back there. Lots of, well, a lot of outside work. And uh, we worked on the log boom, but take care of the outside plumbing. Help, uh, help Terry with a lot of his work around the shop. Do the rigging. And at times, I'm obligated to run the equipment, you know, like the loader, the crane. Jack of all trades, you might say, I guess. How do you like working for city life? Hang on a What? Okay. How do you like working for city life? Good place to work, good people to work with, good people to work for. I've been in this hydroelectric generation for about 34 years now. I sure can't complain on work for the city. Good place to work. Except for a few things. Oh, well, no place can be perfect, you know. But uh, it'll take a little bit of bitter along with the sleep. No problem there. Are you, uh, do you live here because you're a real country person? Pretty good. I was born and raised in the state of Washington. Stevens County is my home, and I just come across the hill here about. 33 years ago, I went to work. Uh, yeah, I live here because I'm a mountain person. I enjoy hunting and fishing. The mountains and the timber, just my kind of country. Great. Thank you, Gene. Bet you.
allow an extra day or two to order the parts you need from the local part house. Yeah. And the same is true here at maintenance with our uh, company uh, vehicles. That uh, we need a fan belt, we might they might have one same day. So uh, we're uh, I've been impressed. It uh, kind of tends to stock things ahead a little bit and uh, write your want list for when you go to town. You both think you'll stick around for a while? Oh, I'm going to, sure. Long time. Yes. I was uh, pleased that my family was uh, adapting and uh, they say they like it. And so uh, we have uh, plans to 